Hello and welcome to Mr. Paul's Pantry. I'm Mr. Paul. If you're new here, a very, very warm welcome. If you're returning, well, it's nice to see you back again. Now, today's recipe is for something I've had a lot of requests for. A lot, and I mean a lot. Every single day for weeks, I've had these requests for making a real a Cornish pasty. So that's what we're going to do today. I show you the ingredients, I show you <clears throat> what to do with them, and I show you how to produce the nicest Cornish pasty you've ever tasted. Let's do it! And before we go any further, I'd like to give a shout out to my Patreon supporters. They are David Cronin, Sally Whitfield, Stuart Williams, June Panting, Foodie Two, Sylvia Wright, Alan Simmons, Julia Hawthorne, May Ling, and Bev Natris. Thank you guys, I really appreciate your support. Thanks a lot. Okay, now the ingredients we need for this uh, Cornish pasty is first of all, some meat. Now I've got crop steak or chuck steak, whatever you call it in your part of the world. It's from the shoulder of the animal and it's also known as braising steak. Okay, there's no need to buy fillet steak and things like that because it's going to be minced. I've bought it like this. I'm going to mince it myself. Now if you haven't got a mincer, you go buy the meat at the butcher's and then ask him to mince it for you. I don't recommend you go to a supermarket and buy a packet of ready minced beef. That's not a good idea in some supermarkets. So get the meat and then ask the butcher, would he kindly mince it for you? And he will do that. That's the beauty of having uh, a local butcher who you get to know. So we've got the meat. Uh, I'm using 500 grams here, half a kilo. Uh, the full recipe will be underneath the video uh, afterwards and also on my website. So don't worry about the quantities at this stage. We need some potatoes. We need onion. Now that's quite a large onion. I'll probably only use half of that one. And some swede. Now swede is essential if you want to make an authentic Cornish pasty. You can omit it if you want, but it will alter the taste of the thing. A little swede makes all the difference. I just bought a tiny one today and they're difficult to buy here in Spain because they are a winter vegetable and of course we're not there yet. So these have been imported from somewhere, I think from England, but I'm not sure from where. And a few breadcrumbs, uh, I'll give you the quantities, and the only seasoning we're going to use in all this is salt and white pepper, nothing else. So there, just to recap, the beef, potatoes, onion, swede, a few breadcrumbs, salt, and white pepper, not black pepper, okay? So I'll get on with preparing the vegetables and then I'll see you shortly. Now often getting asked how is the best way to dice an onion? Well, there's only one way. First of all, I cut my onion in half before I peel it. I don't remove the root there. I leave that on. I take the top off and then I peel from the top with my fingers and take the outer skin off like that. All I do then is cut, have the root to my left and I cut down there as near to the root as I can. I don't know if you can see those little slots like that. And then all we do is we cut downwards and it automatically comes in little dices for you. Don't start doing what some of the fancy chefs start showing you to do. You'll cut your fingers. Start telling you to do things like this. Cut it across there and there. That's not necessary. They just do that to make it look like they're very clever with a knife. That's all. It's not necessary. Just do the cuts that I've shown you and when you get to the end 
just take that bit off there throw the root away and there you've got your lovely diced onions and that's just a nice size to go into the Cornish pasty right now when we're wanting to dice the potatoes up like this for the Cornish pasty it's a simple matter of taking a piece off the side like that so the potato will sit flat see then down and then as if you're making chips one two three I don't know if you can see can you see that on the screen and then just cut little dice across like that I'll do another one for you I'll move these out of the way so we go one two three down the slice turn it and there you have do exactly the same with the Swede and they'll be perfect for your Cornish pasty right now here we are <coughs> with the ingredients first of all we're going to put in the meat which I have already minced I explained to you that I was going to uh, mince that myself and then into that I'm going to add the breadcrumbs and we're using 50 grams of breadcrumbs that will be in the recipe below the video don't worry about the quantities at the moment we're now going to add the seasoning now this is quite a lot of seasoning and you need to use a measuring spoon don't pick out a spoon from your cutlery drawer because you might get one of your grannies or your mothers and it'd be very different to the ones you got for a wedding present so get a measuring spoon this is two and a half teaspoons of salt level two teaspoon level teaspoons of white pepper that goes in next and what we're going to do now we're going to mix that through gently so we're going to actually what we're doing is seasoning the meat in actual fact okay just gently we're not squashing it together now normally when traditional Cornish pasties are made they don't mince the meat like this or well, they shouldn't really what they use normally do is chop it with a knife very small now the idea of my videos here is to make things as easy as possible so you can do it at home so I'm showing you some little different things that normally would happen if they're made commercially a lot of commercial companies do actually mince the meat but to be correct it should be chopped but we're not going to do that I've minced it your butcher will mince it for you and if you notice it's a lot different to the mince you buy in a supermarket ready minced that's really very really fine and mushed up like sausage meat we don't want that that's why it's better to ask your butcher to mince that for you once you once he's weighed it out so that's the meat the breadcrumbs and the seasoning all gone in there together now next on the list is excuse me a moment next on the list is the onion and I showed you how to chop that nice and diced that goes in next I'm going to give that a little mix and if you can see that in there I'll just tip the bowl and show you they're nice chunky pieces of onion they're not mushed up to nothing don't be tempted to put them through if you're mincing your own meat don't be tempted to put them through with the meat through the mincer that's not the way to do it next we're going to put in there some oil 50 millilitres of oil traditionally they would put butter in I think when they made uh, really high quality Cornish pasties but butter isn't a thing a lot of people have it's an expensive item and I find it doesn't do the job as well as oil I think they only used butter in the old days before they had cooking oils okay now that's going to give a little now people also ask me why do I put the breadcrumbs in here uh, and I'll, I'll explain to you why in England we use rusk in sausage and I use rusk in this 
Ruski is made from flour, water and fat, right? And what it does, it, in, during the cooking, it absorbs the fat in the meat and any moisture, any juice from the meat, and it holds it inside the sausage or the Cornish pasty so that when you eat it, it hasn't boiled out and the inside is dry. It's nice and juicy inside. That's all that's in there for. It's not there to make it, the meat go any further or anything like that. It's just to absorb some of the juices of the meat to hold it in the pasty. Now, once we've got this far, we're now going to add the swede. And I've done the swede exactly like the potatoes. And we're going to add the potatoes as well. There we are. And I'll give that a mix. Give it a nice thorough mix through. And as you can see there, excuse me, lost a little bit on the bench. As you can see there now, it's a nice distribution of all the ingredients. It's not sticky, it's not mushy, it's just a nice mixture of fresh ingredients. And we're all ready now to pop this into the pastry cases. Okay, now when it comes to the pastry, comes to pastry, Everybody's got their own way of making it, people who cook regularly. If you haven't got a regular recipe of use, then I will put a link below the video to my pastry recipes. This is short crust pastry. Short crust. Okay, it's not sweet. It's not puff pastry. It's just short crust pastry, which I use for all my pies and tarts and things like that. And when you're making your pastry, it's easy to make it too wet. Be very careful. When you take a piece of pastry that you made, if you just pull it like this, it should just break apart. It shouldn't stretch at all. If it stretches at all, like bread dough, you've mixed it far too much. Okay, as soon as you get the th ingredients together, just push it together with your hands like this. Pop it in a bit of cling film and stick it in the fridge for half an hour to rest. Okay, now I'm going to put a little flour on the board and I'm going to use a cutter. It's actually a cake, a cake ring that I'm going to use. I'm going to use this today, but you can use anything at all, something like this. Upturn it on your pastry and cut round it if you haven't got a large cutter. Okay, that's this is what I used to use in the in, in, in the bakery. Although we did have a machine for making pasties. Uh, sometime I'll show you that. I have it tucked away somewhere in the garage. <laughs> but at the moment I'm going to use this cake ring, okay? And I'll put it on there and this will just tell me the size that I need the pastry out to roll out to. So we'll start in the middle. Start it with a... I'll just move this out of the way. And that. Always roll your pastry gently and let the rolling pin do the work. Don't push it and press on it. Just gently let the rolling pin do the work. I need a little bit of flour on it sticking on my pin a little bit. So I want to get it out to the size I've marked on the table. If you keep lifting your pastry up and moving it or turning it or flipping it over whatever you want to do do that occasionally because that helps it not to stick to the table now i think we're almost there with this i'm just doing it to the size of the cutter for the moment there we are i'm going to cut that out that goes back in to be re-rolled now this is the piece of pastry we're going to make the pasty from. You can make yours whatever size you want. You can make them smaller or larger. It makes no difference. Right? Okay, now here's the filling. Now I use one of these for filling my pasties. I like to do that when I'm making cupcakes or things like that. A different size of these just gives you a, a uniform fill each time. 
So I want to take this nice scoop and pop it in the middle of the pasty. Perhaps put a little bit more in there, right? And we're going to take a pastry brush and a drop of water and just go round the edge there. Not too much, just dampen it and that'll just help it seal together. And we're going to take the back and the front up together to meet in the middle like that. Then take it down to the side and take it down to that side as well. Just move that out of my way. And then we need to crimp the whole thing and you can either just crimp it like this like that or I'll show you another one and then I'll show you the different crimps you can do with it. Okay now once you've got it to this stage folded over you can do what granny used to do just go around with a fork like that if you want to crimp it nicely and leave it like that and cook it like that. You see that's like that but what we normally do in the shop is we stand it on its end like that turn it around sorry we've got flour on that side dust it off turn it on its end like that and then we do what we call a rope crimp like this on top and then that goes on your tray egg washed and so you can do whatever sort of a crimp you like it makes no difference so keep going until you've got your half a dozen or whatever you're going to make uh, and depending on the size you make them it will depend of course how many you get and then they'll go on a baking tray I'll do a few more and I'll show you once they're on the tray and going in the oven so now here we are we're going to egg wash them this is a little egg wash with a bit of salt in it just an egg beaten up with some salt in it that's all all over give them a nice coating now I don't like to cook these until they're very very brown some people like them very golden brown but I don't I think a Cornish pasty looks much nicer and, and eats nicer when it's just color just starting to color but that's up to you I'm going to cook these at 200 degrees for 30 minutes 200 degrees for 30 minutes now if you want them a little brown you need to leave them a little longer but that's what I do now don't try putting the heat up and cooking them any less because don't forget the meat is raw in these so it needs cooking and the potatoes everything's raw inside nothing is cooked so it needs 30 sometimes 32 minutes but I set them at 30 and then have a look at them okay so that's going in the oven and we'll see what they look like when we come out okay here we are that's 32 minutes in the oven and you can see how they've all puffed out now the, the potatoes are swollen up and they're looking very very nice now I'm going to let those cool and uh, we'll open one let you have a look inside and I might even force myself to have a taste okay well here they are nicely cooled and I think we'll just open one and let you have a look inside inside and there we are beautiful genuine Cornish pasty with meat onion potato swede salt and pepper nothing else and I'm just going to have a nice little taste of that now okay very nice excuse me well I hope you've enjoyed the video if you have go underneath give it a thumbs up and leave any comments or suggestions or questions you wish I do read them all and if you haven't subscribed already press the subscribe button and when you do you'll see a little bell icon at the side
click on that and you'll be informed every time I put up a new video. So this is Mr. Paul saying bye for now and I'll see you next time. Bye.